out to the YouTube gang, a big shout out to the Patreon gang. I say it every time, but the support over there really does make a difference. So huge thank you to these awesome folks supporting on Patreon. Patreon has three tiers. There's a free tier, there's a three euro per month tier, and there's an eight euro per month tier. Link in the description below if you want to check it out. Right, enough about that. Let's get stuck into it. Well, you read the title of this video. I wanted to see what happens if we combine the expressive chords device uh, with the drum rack. And well, you can hear what's going on. I kind of think this is some pretty interesting results. Uh, what's going on in the background here? Well, I just made this little sequence thing just to sort of give a bit of context to everything. This is what we're going to look at today, how to program this kind of stuff. And if you've been uh, following this channel recently, you've seen I've been really exploring this idea of, of patterns, how when we engage with music, our brains are sort of functioning as a prediction machine. We like patterns, uh, even patterns that like this, like feel kind of, I, I don't think I could write this down. <laughs> I don't think I could, could hum it back to you, but there, there is, I can sort of feel when the kick drums are going to happen and feel where particular sounds are going to happen. Uh, so I wanted to explore ways to do that and ways to generate a whole bunch of sort of different patterns, sort of complex patterns like this super easily. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, unmute that, but I'm going to, I'm going to turn those off. So this idea started because I was thinking about what is it that the, the expressive chords device actually does. So I'm going to bring the expressive chords device onto a new channel and I'm going to bring in uh, an instrument. I'm just going to bring in an operator so we can hear what's going on. So the, the expressive chords device, if I press this button here, which corresponds to actually if I was to press uh, C1 on my keyboard, we can hear it generates a chord. It generates four notes. And if I was to input C sharp one, we get a different four notes and a different four notes and so on. So the way that uh, this, this device is designed is if you were to do something like this, you just put in like four, you know, any, oops, come on, uh, any four random notes. These notes are of course not controlling the, the notes that are being output. They're just triggering which of the, which of the chords is being played. So we're getting four chords getting played there. So I kind of think of this a, a little bit like a, uh, right, let's, let's press stop. I kind of think of this a little bit like a chord sampler. Like it's, it's almost a little bit like a drum rack in the way that it's set out. Like when I press this button, it plays those four MIDI notes. It plays that chord, it plays that sample. Uh, so I thought, right, we're outputting four notes. Uh, that's a pattern. And, you know, in this case, what, what I just programmed in here was uh, four notes and then another four notes and then another four notes and then another four notes. So that's like a, 16 note pattern split into four notes. So I thought, let's see what happens if we combine that with a drum rack. Uh, and what kind of cool results can we get out of that? So I'm going to delete this operator. I'm going to bring in a drum rack in here. We're going to go audio effects. No, so we're not. We're going to go instruments. We're going to go drum rack. Uh, and I'm going to load some samples into here. I might, let, well, let, let's start. I'm going to go in here and samples. Uh, I've got this nice kick drum called the answer phone kick drum. I'm just going to drag that onto C1 here. I'm going to find some nice clicky samples. So I'm going to go to my, uh, well, I'm going to fast forward through this. Uh, I'll come back to you when I've loaded some samples. Okay, so I've just got a few samples loaded in here so we can explore the concept. Uh, of course, this, this main rack that I built, downloadable uh, for all Patreon members, uh, a few more samples in it. I've done some more uh, stuff and processing on those. Uh, but let's do a quick thing on here. So you could bring in any samples you like. Uh, so I have an answer phone, uh, so an answer phone. It's a kick drum called the answer phone. Uh, I have a, a break. I have a whole bunch of multi samples of a snare drum. Uh, I have some percussion hits. I have a whole bunch of uh, glitchy, clicky stuff. I've got a sample of a broken modem. I'm not going to press play because it's never going to stop. And some one shots here, a hit, and then a, and then another little hit. Right, let's do a little bit of processing, or you know, not processing, but let's let's adapt some of these. Let's uh, turn snap off, and I'm going to right click and copy value to siblings. Uh, these these are the siblings here, so it's copied that value to all of these simplers. I'm going to turn it to a uh, gate mode instead of trigger, so that they do stop when the MIDI notes stop. I'm going to copy that value to siblings. And now for the kick drum, I'm going to switch it to classic mode. Uh, I'm going to bring the release uh, sort of down to about there and let's right click and copy that value to siblings. So now, now I've got a kick drum that can be short or it can be long, super nice. Right, the break. I'm going to chop this up, so I'm going to turn it to slice mode. And now you'll notice when I press play here, uh, we don't get any notes. So I, I'm, I'm effectively triggering C sharp one here, but the drum rack is programmed to output C3. So that's way out the end from where all these samples are. So let's change that. Let's come into the drum rack settings here. Let's change the in out and let's change this to output at C1, which I can type in 36 and that gives me that note C1. 
you can just drag that up and down also to get C1. So that's now outputting the first note of that sample. Now I wanted to sort of cycle through these these hits. So I'm going to bring in uh, the random device, MIDI random. MIDI notes random. So th this is going to generate random MIDI notes. It's going to turn the chance up to 100%. But instead of random, I'm going to set it to alternate. So now each time I trigger a note here, it plays through those notes in the sample. Now at the moment, it's going to keep going too far. Yeah, so I probably want to change this to, to eight, I think, or maybe seven. Let's try eight. Ooh. Yeah, eight, eight notes, there we go. So now each time this receives a MIDI note, it's gonna play through uh, one of those slices. Super nice, let's actually pitch that up a bit. And I'm gonna switch this to warp, turn on warp. I'm gonna switch it to texture mode and I'm gonna sort of really stretch it out. So we're gonna get some sort of, yeah. Some sort of glitchy, granular stuff happening with that break each time it triggers a sample. Super nice, right. Snare drums, uh, I could randomize them. I'm just gonna leave it on one at the moment. Just that one, yeah, let's do that for now. Uh, right, percussion hits, I'm gonna slice these up. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing as I just did. So I'm gonna bring in, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna cycle through them. Uh, this is just gonna be random. So I'm gonna turn this and put this back to eight. So now each time I hit a percussion hit here, uh, oh, we need to change this to C1. Let's put that to C1. Uh, too high. I think this just needs to go to seven. Yeah. So each time that that happens, we're getting we're getting a, a random a random percussion hit. Uh, glitchy click. Right. Let's slice this and let's do the same thing. I need to bring that over to here. So yeah. Bring in a random. Let's turn the chance all the way up. Let's turn that back down to seven. And so we're going to get a random. Uh, oh, I need to put this back to C one as well. So let's switch that to thirty six. Yeah, let's random pan that as well. Let's come in here into the controls. Let's turn the random pan up. I've got this broken modem sound. Uh, what does that sound like? Ooh. Right, let's, uh, let's slice this. Uh, let's just pick a chunk in the middle here. And again, let's use random. Now this time we've got a whole bunch of slice. Actually, bring the sensitivity down a tiny bit and bring it back over here. And this time we can turn the choices all the way up. So now we're going to get... <laughs> Sounds like R2-D2. Right, what have we got here? Yeah, just a nice little hit. What are we going to do with this? Well, let's also turn the random pan up on that. Uh, really nice. And let's let's randomly transpose it. Let's bring in a MIDI effects. Uh, let's use an expression control. Let's switch this to random. Switch this to 100%. Bipolar. And we're going to map that to uh, to the transpose here. Now what happens if we do this? Yeah, maybe a bit too much on the transpose. Let's bring that down a bit. Nice. Okay, so we're getting some random hit sounds there. And this hit. I'll tell you what, let's just leave that as it is for now. So, now when I press this note, we're triggering four notes. And we can see those four notes happening on the drum rack over here. And only one of those is actually triggering a sample. So the, re the rest is sort of way out the top. Let's change that. Let's change it so that any notes that come out of here are going to play one of these eight, eight samples here. So we're going to do that with a MIDI effect. We're going to use a pitch device. We're going to drag that in here. The lowest is going to be C1 again, so 36. And it's going to go up, up seven. So plus uh, seven up from there. And we're going to choose fold mode so that whatever four notes are coming out of here, it's going to fold those notes into be within this eight notes here. So yeah, each time I press this, <laughs> we're getting, we're getting uh, four notes that, that correspond. Well, in this case, we're just getting, just getting three notes. We're getting a different three notes there. Why am I only getting two notes there? Three notes there, four notes there. What's going on? Oh, it's probably doubling. It's probably doubling some notes. That's why. That's why uh, we're getting it, uh, only triggering two or three sometimes. That's okay. That's okay. That mat that doesn't matter for this. Obviously, the more notes that you, that you have in here, um, the less chance of notes getting doubled. But it doesn't really matter if sounds are getting doubled, uh, because they're only going to trigger one sound because these are mono mono simplers. Right. So each time I press C one, we're getting those four or those three notes, four notes getting triggered. Each time I press C sharp, and we're getting those. So. What happens if we bring in an arpeggiator in here? 
And let's just change the arpeggiator to uh, 16th notes. Super nice. <laughs> this is nice. So each, each one of these keys is now going to generate a different four notes, which is going to give, give us a different pattern. Now, I'm going to take this a step further, and instead of me just programming in four notes in here, let's use a sequencer to sequence those four notes. So we're get, they're going to get these rotating series of four notes. <laughs> There's a lot of four notes. I've said four notes a lot today. Right, let's bring a sequencer in here. Come on, sequencer, you can come in here. And we can see that's triggering this note, but we're not actually hearing anything. Now, or every now and then we're hearing a tiny little thing. So what I'm going to, that's because this sequencer, uh, well, let's check. Let's check on the MIDI monitor what's going on here. So we'll turn the MIDI monitor on. And we're just getting that C, C3 note being triggered, and that's being triggered at 16th notes, which is the same range as the arpeggiator. So I'm going to change chord. I'll call it chord. I'm going to change which four notes are being triggered. Uh, I'm going to slow that right down. We're going to do that at like, yeah, quarter notes, something like that you can hear it's still turning on and off. And that's because the length of notes coming out, coming out of the SQ sequencer, uh, that, well, they're starting and stopping. So let's fix that. Let's bring in a note length in here. And let's turn on latch. So we can hear it's now the same four notes being triggered. Uh, Oh, every every quarter note. Uh, let's change the arpeggiator style. Maybe it's nice if we do like something like pink, pinky up down. Actually, I, I'm going to leave it. I'm, I'm going to leave it on up. Leave it on up for now. The different arpeggiator settings. You're going to get different patterns, of course, because it's going to play the notes in a different order. I was thinking the pinky up uh, down might be nice because then we get sort of the repeating notes. But maybe that's maybe that's a bit too intense. Anyway, let's put it back to up for now. Cool, I'm going to come to the uh, arpeggiator here. Let's turn the gate to 100%. Maybe maybe 99. There we go. <laughs> this is kind of nice. So even this, we get, we're triggering the same note, the same four notes every time, but that little bit of randomness that we've got uh, going on with the samples that are being hit and, and, the, and the, the, the placement is already giving it some, some change, but... If we hit this little dice button here and randomize these pitches, that's going to randomize which chord is being played. So if I press randomize here. But it's randomizing the chord that's being played, but we're getting those chords in a sequence of eight notes. So we're getting eight notes. <laughs> we're getting eight times four notes. So we're effectively having a, a 32 note sequence uh, getting spat out and coming into into the drum rack now. This was the main idea that I explored. I took it a bit further. On the on the Patreon mem members version, you can download this rack, which has you know a whole bunch of more samples in it. Let's do a little bit more stuff on the processing. Like let's send some of these these drum hits to a reverb. Let's set a reverb up inside the drum rack. So I'm going to activate the reverbs here. Well, the return. Sorry. Get a right click, create a return chain. Uh, let's drag a reverb in here. Let's use hybrid reverb. Change that to 100% wet because all the dry signals coming out the, the main part. Let's turn on the sends here so I can send some stuff to it. And let's just maybe change those, uh, send that percussion hit. Yeah, there we go. This is kind of nice. Let's send these, these, these small hits out to the reverb as well. You know what's going to be nice is if we sidechain that reverb against the kick drum. It's going to make sure everything feel glued together. Let's bring a compressor in here. We're going to turn on external. We're going to activate sidechain. We want that to come from the, this drum rack, and we want that to come from the, the, the kick drum, which is called answer phone. Let's just bring the threshold down. Yeah, so now those reverbs are really ducking behind every time the kick drum happens. We could go super intense, like do a whole bunch of like stuff like some of some of these we could change to to loop instead of just play one shots <laughs> yeah let's 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 bring in a midi effect in here and let's change the length of that loop so let's bring in uh, the expression control i'm going to turn this to random and what, what am i changing here i'm changing the end so that's going to be the length here yeah let's make that maybe go a little bit further I, know, I want it to be super short because I'm going to 
make it just go unipolar so that length there. I want this to go minus. Yeah, nice. And let's change the rise and fall so it sort of slows up and speeds down each time. Yeah, this could maybe even go a bit longer. Let's turn this actually a bit shorter so it makes those changes a bit quicker. This is super nice. Let's do some stuff with the break. Let's maybe let's maybe maybe randomize the pitch of the break as well. So let's bring in an expression control. And again, change this to random. 100%. Let's make this uh, let's make it just unipolar on the transpose. Super nice. And now of course each time we press random here, we're going to get a new series of notes here. And remember this is just the sequence in which those those uh, notes are being played on the arpeggiator. So let's hit random again. So I really like this because I can feel the pattern. I can sort of sense a pattern, but I can't quite predict the pattern. That's really drawing me in. That's really engaging me with the music that's going on. We could do something cool with the arpeggiator as well. Like maybe what happens if we... Uh I think we're going to get something really cool happening here. Let's let's randomize that. So let's randomize that uh, free rate every time this changes. So every quarter note. So we're going to uh, turn that turn that on random. Let's use that to control. Let's make that go bipolar. And let's make that control here. And again, let's turn these up. <laughs> this is getting quite chaotic. But we are still getting. Each, each quarter note, we're still getting those same chords being triggered from the expressive chords device, which means we're still getting the same set of four samples being triggered. And again, you know, if I was to load in more samples here, that would that might make a bit more sense and things would change a bit more, but let's come back to here. So that's another cool thing you can do with the arpeggiator here. Let's add a, let's add a drum bus at the end, because I think that's going to be, sort of glue everything together. Uh, drum bus. Let's add some transients. Bit of crunch. Cool, let's bring that sequence back in. Cool. That's the rack. Patreon members can download the set. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you have fun exploring combining expressive chords device with drum racks for ridiculous drum programming. <laughs> See you next time.